Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Good evening, friends. Uh, yes, they're back at it once again, quoting the Vilna of Gohan and trying to make it look like he was prophesying all these wars that are going to take place, especially when it comes to Russia. Uh, I know back in 2014, there was a lot of um, Israelis and, uh, and, and different rabbis capitalizing on uh, the man known as the Vilna of Goan. And um, he is, you know, it was about 300 years ago that uh, he had written in, in, in one of the books that they've released. And, and we've, we've really gone deep into the different things that he's written because they're trying to bring his prophecies to pass by steering the world events into position to make it look like the man was really some great uh, great uh, prophetic seer of, of some sort there. Uh, his real name was Rabbi Elijah ben Solomon uh, Zalman, uh, was what he was, uh, his name was called, and uh, they called him the Vilna of Goan. Very complicated things that he has written uh, over the years there and when he was alive, and, and some of the uh, messages that my wife has taught on too. She's used, utilized a lot of his work. But right now they're really pushing the issue about Ukraine. And I find this fascinating because when I look at this issue on Ukraine, especially in light of the fact of uh, uh, Israel 365 putting this article out, Russia just invaded Ukraine, and this iconic rabbi predicted it will bring the Messiah. Ooh, they're trying to make it all look great and wonderful. But the fact of the matter is it had nothing to do with Russia invading Ukraine. That is all fake news from the very beginning. Uh, we had already shared with you over on Israeli News Live, and, and, and I'll just take you back because we actually posted it on our YouTube uh, channel. And uh, so let me just switch over to that one there so we get to the right one there. And um, we had covered this, this issue. Good evening, Brent. And, uh, oh gosh, what, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I guess now, uh, I'll take and bring you over to it. Um, let's see here. Oh gosh, maybe it was a live video I did this on. Let's just see. Uh, no, it wasn't a live video. So we'll go back to uploads. And... Um, Let's see here. Yemen war nearing an end. No, Moses. Biden pushes the U.S. closer to war with Russians. Um, Biden. So you can see I was we're speaking about it quite frequently there. Uh, let's see. Ukraine honors Biden deal sends tanks. Yeah. See, this this is where we were really getting into this right there. I don't know. This is not the actual one, but this was just one of the videos that we did there on this issue here. So I'm going to put a link for you on this one right here, because the thing was, was we were being told already. And this this was back on March 31st, but we went on to this much earlier than that, that Biden had made a lucrative deal with the Ukrainian government to provoke Russia to stop the Nord 2 uh, gas pipeline from going through Ukraine. And from, you know, all the people, including the Ukrainians, getting cheaper gas rather than buying the American-Israeli version of this. And so we were told in advance that this was going to happen and that we would see uh, troop movements by the Ukrainians uh, as if they were going to go back and take back the uh, Crimea and Donetsk regions of the country there to provoke them. Uh, so we already knew that this was what was really going on. But the media, and we were told that the media is going to spin this that it's a Russian aggression, um, you know, and everything that we were told is exactly what has transpired and continues to transpire. They continue to make it look like Russia's the big bad guy. So when you sit there and you see this type of nonsense here by Israel 365, uh, you know, you know, Russia just invaded Ukraine, and this iconic rabbi predicted it will be bring the Messiah. Totally fake. No, Russia did not just invade Ukraine and had everything to do with an economic deal. But, of course, they're going to spin it for a prophetic uh, a prophetic point of view. And that's what it's all about. So, 
you know, I was even getting from a good friend of mine in Israel, an Israeli journalist there was sending me this as well, saying that, you know, that Russia and Ukraine would lead to the, the war of Gog, of Magog, the coming of the Messiah, tensions between Russia and Ukraine uh, have risen sharply in recent days and have raised concern about the outbreak of war between the two countries. Um, and he also brought up the Vilna of Gohan. Now, will this bring about a war with Ukraine? Well, more than likely so, because they want to make it fulfill their prophecy. Uh, will it also create the Gog of Magog war? I don't doubt that a single bit. All right. But it's not going to be because the Vilna of Gohan had prophesied this. It's because they are making the necessary moves to make it appear that he was a, uh, a, a prophet, so to speak. And, uh, you know, and one of the things he had written years ago was when you hear the Russians have occupied the city of Crimea, you should know that the time of the Messiah has begun, that his steps are heard. When you hear that Russians uh, uh, came to Constantinople, then the meaning is the Messiah is about to come in any moment. And Russian forces have not yet entered Constantinople, he writes to me, he says, which is now Istanbul uh, over in Turkey. But here's what's interesting, though. Don't worry, they're getting everything lined up to do that anyway, right? So, because why Why do I say that? Because, uh, interesting enough, we just had this article come out on Al Jazeera, Ukraine-Turkey cooperation has its limits, right? On April the 10th, President Vladimir Zelensky, which is, by the way, an American puppet, uh, you know, made his way to Istanbul to take part in the ninth meeting of the Turkish-Ukrainian High-Level Strategic Cooperation Council. The primary purpose for his visit was to solicit support from Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan against Russia, a more pressing priority than trade and investment. And uh, the interesting thing was, was back when uh, Yanukovych was uh, uh, the president there, he too was making agreements with Turkey uh, to, to for military cooperation. And, and Turkey was talking boldly then about going in there and taking Crimea back. Well, that's kind of awkward when Russia and Turkey are allies anyway. So in order to break the uh, uh, ally alliance with Turkey and Russia, you got to have some kind of nonsense uh, type of situation like what we have here with Ukraine. And so the thing is, is will it happen? More than likely. Somewhere along the way, Turkey is probably going to get involved with the issue with Ukraine. Well, they want to be part of the European Union anyway, so I wouldn't be a bit surprised. And then you have this here. Somebody, or actually, I saw this one here. Russian tanks on the move reportedly today. Location unknown. Uh, and was asking, what's this thing on the top of these Russian tanks? I don't really know the answer to that, but uh, just the fact is, is more more Russian tanks, etc. Now, Tulsi Gabbard, though, bless her heart, uh, she was on with uh, Tucker Carlson and. Um, so that was kind of nice well, to we've see. we've been arguing Listen about this, pronouns yeah. here in the United States and wondering why 2 by 4s now cost $9 a piece. There's real drama unfolding in Europe. Tensions between Ukraine and Russia are the highest they have been in a very long time. And we get some sense that there are political elements, mostly in the Democratic Party, not exclusively though, who would like to see a war in Europe. What is this, and how concerned should we be about it? Tulsi Gabbard has paid a lot of attention to this. She's a former member of Congress from the state of Hawaii. We're happy to have her on tonight. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. So it, thanks, is Secretary. this conflict moving toward war, and are there leaders in this country who would like to see that, do you think? It is moving in a very dangerous direction, and the question for the American people is, are we willing to go to war with Russia on behalf of Ukraine? And we need to understand that such a war would come at a cost beyond anything that we can really imagine. Because this is not a war that, that is just, okay, this is going to be something that's happening to someone else, somewhere else on the other side of the world. No, this is something that will directly impact me and you, Tucker, every single one of your viewers, and all of our loved ones. And this is, this is a, a war that is not a game. It's a war in which... There are no winners because you've got, you know, thousands of nuclear weapons that the United States has aimed towards Russia. Russia has thousands of nuclear weapons aimed towards us that could hit any town or city in America in less than 30 minutes and exact a cost upon every one of us that would result in excruciating death and suffering beyond comprehension. Hundreds of millions of people 
dying and suffering, seeing their flesh being burned from from their bones. This is something that 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 you know you, you can't really even imagine, uh, and and it's a cost that that we will all pay. Now, one thing that I find very interesting in this that uh, that Tulsi Gabbard is bringing this out about nuclear war is this is some of the things that has been uh, shared with us by Intel uh, uh, friends that we have, that there is a very good possibility that this could turn into a limited nuclear strike on the United States. Uh, I, I go back and I think about the uh, uh, Deagle report and how that in their report, how many, how many millions are supposed to die in 2021 of this year in the United States? We're supposed to have a major reduction of our population. Is it because of a nuclear war? Uh, I, I can't really answer that. I don't know the answer to that question, but I will tell you one thing. Uh, everybody that I know in the Intel community has always said that things are going to all come together at one time. Uh, we're going to be dealing with you know, issues coming in from, uh, from space. We're going to be dealing with uh, this alien disclosure, this uh, messiah figure coming up, which I believe will be an alien antichrist type figure. And even now, uh, some of the information that I've shared with you is that uh, we went to war with Iraq in order to bring Nimrod's body back here. And there is a belief that that will be the messiah that Israel is going to resurrect. Uh, kind of makes me wonder about the image into the beast and that the, 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 um, uh, the what was it, they had power to give life unto the image. Uh, could that be what Nimrod is? I, I don't really know the answers yet. I'm really digging on some of these things here. I'm hoping to do a little teaching on that before too long. We'll get into that a little bit later. But, uh, you know, we've got a lot of things going on in Ukraine. is definitely uh, a very, very explosive topic. But it's not going to be because the Vilna of Gohan has uh, predicted these things. Uh, it will be because they're making his prediction there or they're fitting uh, uh, the the global events to fit his predictions because that's the way they want to uh, unravel this uh, very satanic agenda which will bring which will actually usher in the antichrist is what's going to happen so yeah Russia is taking this all very seriously they have closed the Black Sea uh, not only have they closed the Black Sea but we have the British uh, who are who's bringing their own warships up to the Black Sea uh, for uh, for May they're coming in. They're getting ready for this uh, showdown that, uh, you know, with Russia. And so the Royal Navy warships will sail for the Black Sea next month as tensions continue to rise between Ukraine and Russian forces. Putting the ships off the coast of Ukraine is intended to show solidarity with Kiev and NATO allies. Uh, well, we have to wait to see, see if Russia is going to even allow them to get in there. We know the United States tried to send two ships in, but they ended up backing off the last moment. But really, things are heating up everywhere, even in the situation with the Czech diplomats over an explosion road. Of course, this is an explosion that took place years ago. Uh, but oddly enough, you know, we're seeing uh, that they are expelling these, uh, these Czech diplomats uh, from Russia there. Uh, 18 Russian diplomats on Saturday were, were expelled. And this was based on, like I said, a 2014 explosion. But they're saying they're spies for the United States there. Now, really, really strange how things are, are going on there. And, um, and then we see on top of all of this, Israel and Greece signed a record defense deal. Uh, and, and, that, and, and this comes on the heels, of course, with the situation with Ukraine. We already know there's a lot of tensions between Turkey and uh, Greece. And now Israel is coming to the aid militarily for uh for Greece, as Israel and Greece have signed their biggest ever defense procurement deal, which Israel said on Sunday would strengthen political and economic ties between the countries, and, two, and the two countries' air forces launched a joint exercise. I find that interesting. Greece, who was uh, nearly collapsing the European Union economically because of their financial woes, now they signed an agreement that includes $1.65 billion contract for the establishment and operation of the training center for the Hellenic Air Force by Israel defense contractor Elbit Systems over a 22-year period, Israel's defense ministry said. Where do they get the money for this all of a sudden? country that was on the verge of total collapse, and now they can sign a $1.65 billion deal with Israel? Hmm. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? But, you know, it's kind of interesting as things are going on over in Ukraine and Greece being right there on, on, on the neighboring edge there. So we'll have to wait and see how these things unfold. Uh, but 
one thing's for sure, this whole issue of the Gog of Magog War, which basically, you know, will really turn into a major ordeal there in the Middle East is something that we're watching for. And as I've said before, it's going to be, that war will, it is going to change everything. So many things are going to happen. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. And don't forget, uh, check out our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can always watch our videos there if you're catching this over on um, uh, iConnect or if you're catching it on Fact News Network there, you can catch the videos on our website as well. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening.